AST Space Mobile and SpaceX Starlink DTC service. Looks like your phone will never be offline again. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we're coming to the end of some fireside. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking space, SpaceX, Starlink, Linux, AI. A lot of good tech on this channel. I'm glad you're here. Today, we're gonna to be talking about AST Space Mobile. They've been doing really well. They're in the headlines today and basically the last month or two. They've been moving ahead, doing a really good job at competing with SpaceX, SpaceX Starlink DTC or direct to sell service. So I wanna go through some of this information with you. I've read a couple of articles, I threw them together so we can go through it. And then I'll give you my commentary on it. There's a bunch of things that haven't been spoken about when it comes to this topic. And I wanna to try to get into some of them today with you. And I wanna get your opinion on it. Do you think that this AST Space Mobile will be a direct competitor to SpaceX Starlink DTC service? If so, is this something that you would get involved in in comparison to using Elon Musk? A lot of people don't like Elon and they will move to any other service that they can find that is not his. So there's always those people that will cut off their nose to spite their face. That's just the way it is, right? That's just the way humans are. So I want to hear from you down below. If you don't want to put anything down there because you're shy, I get it. Just put an emoji. At least I know that you're here. That helps out the channel. It helps out the video. If you like the video, throw it a thumbs up. If you don't, throw it a thumbs down. YouTube likes it either which way. All right. I would appreciate that. If you're not subscribed, consider doing so. And if you are subscribed, thank you. I appreciate that too. There's a little button here. Click on that, then click all. So when I go live, when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And if you want more SpaceX Starlink specific coverage, I have about 545 videos just for you. I'm not kidding. 545 videos over the last 50 months. I'll put a link here. Don't click on it yet. When you're done watching this video, click over there, check them out. A lot of helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy. And of course, the why behind all of it, because this channel is always about the what, the why, the why. I think why is more important than the how. Lastly, if you want to say thank you for all of my hard work on this channel, there's a little thanks button down here. You can click on that. Thank you, YouTube, for the thanks button. Click on that, give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. So let's jump right into this article. And then once again, I'll give you my commentary. And then finally, I want to hear from you down below. Don't forget, or an emoji, either which way. AST Space Mobile pushes cellular coverage anywhere. AST Space Mobile is taking another major step towards its vision of connecting smartphones directly to satellites in orbit. No bulky antennas, no special hardware required. This week, the Texas-based company confirmed it's on track to launch its first five operational Bluebird satellites in Q1 of 2026, marking the transition from test flights to a functioning network. These satellites are designed to link directly with ordinary 4G and 5G smartphones, enabling coverage in remote regions where traditional cell towers can't reach oceans, deserts, disaster zones, and even rural areas. Unlike SpaceX's Starlink direct to sell or DTC service, which focuses on text first, AST plans to offer full voice and data capabilities from day one. This is actually true. SpaceX Starlink decided to go with DTC service text only at first and then moving into calls and then finally video and data. So right now, SpaceX Starlink DTC through T-Mobile is giving us SMS, but also now MMS, which means that you can send photos through this no cell coverage where you're using a satellite which is really kind of cool. Before I go any further, I should explain to you what DTC is because a lot of people don't understand it. And then if you're listening to me, you're like, what the hell is this guy talking about? So DTC or direct to sell means that you can take your unmodified cell phone and connect to a satellite overhead. That's basically it. There's a lot more to it, of course. What SpaceX Starlink has done is converted some of their version two mini satellites into DTC or direct to sell satellites, meaning that they have E node Bs or they're basically modems that turn those satellites into cell towers. So we have cell towers in space. That's how it works. And 
it actually does work, which is really odd, right? Considering your phone could speak to a satellite at 340 kilometers in space. Anyways, that's what DTC service is. Let's get back into the article. Direct to phone, not just text. The big differentiator here is that AST's system is being developed in close partnership with major carriers like AT&T, Vodafone, and Rakuten. Well, I guess SpaceX Starlink is also in cahoots or together with T-Mobile. That is a major carrier too. But what they're stating here is that AST is with a lot of different carriers, Vodafone and Verizon, most likely, and AT&T and so on and so forth. Anyways, it continues. Those partnerships mean integration into existing networks could be faster and more seamless than competing services that are building their own parallel networks. The company has already demonstrated 10 megabits download speed in real world tests using an unmodified Samsung Galaxy phone. Not groundbreaking compared to terrestrial broadband, but more than enough for calls, messaging, and basic app use in the middle of nowhere, launch time, and development plans. While AST originally aimed to start service in 2025, the company now says Q1 2026 is the realistic go-live date for initial service. The first five satellites will provide limited coverage, but the goal is to scale to 45 operational satellites by the end of 2026. That's a fraction of the thousands of satellites that SpaceX is deploying, but AST's network requires far fewer spacecraft because each Bluebird satellite covers an enormous footprint, around 3,000 times larger than a typical Starlink beam. That's actually incorrect information. Yes, it's 3,000 times larger than a typical Starlink version 2 mini beam, but it's not 3,000 times larger than a Starlink DTC beam. That's about 1,772 times. <laughs> about 2,000 times larger. It's still bigger, but it's not 3,000 times. The math, guys. The math. <laughs> Anyways, you have to call them out when they're wrong. It continues. Why this matters. If AST can deliver on its promises, it could fill a critical gap between traditional cell towers and space-based internet providers. It's a technology aimed not just at niche explorers, but at everyday users who occasionally find themselves in coverage blackout areas. We see that a lot here in Florida, especially when you get close towards the lake, there's not a lot of cell towers, and all of a sudden, you have no service. It doesn't matter if you're on Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, there's just no coverage. So that's where this kind of thing plays. And now just to have the ability to text somebody, say, listen, I'm okay, is great. But to be able to also have data so that you can have mapping is even better. And that's what we're gonna see down the road. I'm excited about this. I think that it is really powerful and I do think that it's gonna save lives. That's my personal opinion. Now, the size of this thing, these AST Bluebirds are massive, 64 square meters in size. It is the largest commercial satellite ever built, 64 square meters. That is huge. That's why they say that there's 3,000, well, I, I made it clear, it's actually 1,700 and change. Let's call it 2,000 times larger footprint. So what that means is they just simply need less of them, where SpaceX Starlink needs a lot of these DTC satellites because it's a more condensed or focused footprint beam, let's say. AST's beam is like this, it's massive. And its antenna is huge, 64 square meters. When I read that, I was like, wow, that is crazy. So what I find interesting here is that the operational lifespan of these things are identical to SpaceX Starlinks. About five years, that's it, they're dead. Now, where do they sit in orbit? Well, they're gonna be at about 550 kilometers. SpaceX Starlink's DTC is about 340, 320 kilometers for their DTC service. So it is closer when it comes to SpaceX Starlink further away with AST. Now that's gonna help them with their footprint because the higher you go, the larger that footprint is. But also when you have a massive antenna, 64 square meters, what is the difference in size? I believe a DTC, 
antenna is about 1.3, 1.2, somewhere on there. Let's call it one meter. So it's 64 of a DTC satellite, the antenna. So you could imagine how massive this is, 64 square meters compared to like 1.3 square meters. Unbelievable, the size difference. Now, when I was going through this, they didn't really give more information when it comes to like, how is AST Space Mobile doing? You know, how is it viewed by the public? How is it viewed by shareholders, so to speak? And what I found was AST Space Mobile at the beginning of the year, like January 1st, let's say, was at about $20 per share. As of today, it's sitting at about $50 per share. It is up like about 150% year to date. That is massive. So what this means to me is that people really do believe that AST Space Mobile will be a direct competitor to Elon Musk's SpaceX Starlink DTC service. Is that the case? I think it is. Now, rarely do I say that. Normally, SpaceX is always, always on top, and they currently are on top. They have more satellites up there. They currently have none, just test satellites. They should have that 45 number by the end of 2026, if all goes well for them, even if it pushes into 2027. The thing is, is they are already doing it, so to speak. They have so many contracts already. It is insane. The number of contracts is just nuts. I, mean, I think it was like $43 million contract just with the Defense Department. They have a ton of contracts already in place. And like I said before, they have these partnerships already with these major corporations like Vodafone, with Verizon, all of these major carriers. So it's not just one, like what Elon Musk is doing with SpaceX Starlink's DTC, T-Mobile. That's the service. That is the spectrum that they're using. That is it. These people are using everyone's, or at least so they say. Once again, it seems that they are because I'm telling you, the stock is just going berserk. I think it was up 8 to 10% just yesterday alone. It just shot up. So the other thing that I was thinking about here is what is going to happen with the astronomers? And nothing talked about this at all. And I was thinking about it to myself. I said, you know, these things are so massive, 64 square meters. That's like what, almost 700 square feet? It's just sick. It's massive. The largest commercial satellites up there. <laughs> I did some research on this and I found that Every one of these massive satellites is 300 times brighter than a SpaceX Starlink DTC satellite. 300 times brighter. So the astronomers, we haven't heard from them as of yet, but I'm sure as I'm saying this right now, they're probably thinking to themselves, this is gonna be a problem. And it is. Imagine 45 of these massive satellites that are at 700 square feet, or like I said, 64 square meters. I mean, it, you could probably see them with like binoculars or something. I'm exaggerating, but still they are massive. Even though they're at 550 kilometers compared to the 320, 340, those are still very, very big and they're gonna be very bright in the night sky. Anyways, it's just a little bit something extra to think about. I wanna know what you think. Is this something that you would be a part of if you had the ability to get AST Space Mobile in comparison to using Elon Musk, SpaceX, Starlink, DTC service, would you go down that road? Remember, they're not just doing SMS, just texting. They're doing MMS. They're also doing voice calls and data and everything else. So it's going to be really a powerful tool once it is up there in space. We will have to see. Once again, is this something that you would be interested in? Is it a pricing thing? What is it? I want to hear from you down below. And like I said, if you don't want to put something down there, just throw an emoji. That's fine. I appreciate that. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have, throw the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to share the video and the channel with your friends, family, colleagues, Reddit, Facebook, wherever you frequent. That would be very helpful. And if you're looking for any of my merch, you should be. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash shop. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash shop. There's a lot of cool stuff over there. Check it out. If there's something there you like, pick it up. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, hopefully through SpaceX Starlink or AST, Space Mobile. We'll see you in the next one. Love you guys.